Yes, my child? We have unfinished business. Ah. Attack me. What? With all your strength. Why? Hi and welcome back. I know it's been quite a while since I've made a video and I'm trying to be as excited about this one as I possibly can. That being said, I watched Star Wars The Acolyte Episode 1. And I have thoughts, many thoughts, and I'm just going to go straight into them because honestly, I have four of these pages full of notes. That's that's how much it's just I uh, the, the first page was already full after the first five minutes. So we're going to be diving into this. So give me a little bit. I'm going to be talking about episode one here. I haven't seen episode two yet. So keep that in mind with this review. However, I don't see this show picking up at all. At all. At all. I mean, come on, it even starts here with the very first part. A hundred years before the rise of the Empire, it is a time of peace. The Jedi Order and the Galactic Republic have prospered for centuries without war. But in the dark corners of the galaxy, a powerful few learn to use the Force in secret. One of them, a lone assassin, risks discovery to seek revenge. That tells you nothing. Why is there revenge happening? But guess what? In the first few minutes of the show, which we're going to be getting into, you get to see how she takes her revenge. Yeah, that clip that I showed at the beginning, that is right here. She just walks right up to the Jedi and be like, fight me. Fight me. Uh. I have no reason to like this character. I have no reason to be invested in why this character is seeking revenge. Revenge for what? Now, look. I know a lot of people are probably going to come out and be like, guess what? You learn about why this person has revenge on the Jedi later in the series, but I'm not invested in this character. I have no reason to like this character, to root for this character. This is one of your main characters. This is your protagonist. Why should I care? I just don't. And to be perfectly honest, and I made the tweet earlier, this is the most bland Hollywood projected black female character of all times. It's just stereotypical Hollywood female black character. The, the hair, everything, just, just, ah. Uh. Honestly, the choreography in this fight is just so boring. It has moments where the time slows down, as in Matrix. Oh, that's Trinity, isn't it? Uh, well, not here on the screen right now, but the woman she's fighting, it's like... Um, makes no sense to me. Then the fight, it does not look like Star Wars. It's not Star Wars. It looks like a bad cheaply made western adaptation of a fighting movie I, like it's it's really bad it is that bad i can't say it enough the fight is horrible and it makes no sense and like i was this far into the battle the jedi had actually already won but instead just you know let's her go like ma whatever mm -hmm. yeah sure and i'm like why has she not pulled her lightsaber and just finished it? It could have been done by now. Now, I'm not saying that she needed to kill the character, but I incapacitate the character. Come on, do something. What are you doing, Jedi? It makes no sense. Oh, but guess what? 
we have a perfect line. A Jedi doesn't pull their lightsaber unless they want to kill. Yeah, guess what? You're attacking her, wanting to kill her. Maybe she should use that lightsaber and kill you. But guess what? We know from Star Wars that that is not the only reason a Jedi will pull their lightsaber out. I mean, did Ben Kenobi kill the guy at the tavern because he was attacking Luke? No, he cut off his arm, incapacitated the guy, didn't kill him. Luke Skywalker. Did Luke Skywalker want to kill Vader? Nope. Wanted to save his father. So pulling his lightsaber with the intention to kill doesn't quite fit the bill. It's not Star Wars, people. Oh, yeah, the fight lasts about five minutes and then she's over with. Next scene, and look, this is something I've actually said about Star Wars quite often. Usually the visuals, no matter how bad the storytelling is, no matter how bad the dialogue is, the visuals actually look good. I can't say that for this show. Now, it took me a bit, and at this point I wasn't ready to say it, but at the end of the show I finally just realized it just looks like a generic, cheaply made sci-fi and a lot of the time the ships and the movement of, of everything just seems more as if it was in line with the animated series like it would fit in there perfectly and you wouldn't even tell a difference but here it looks so off it looks so uncanny and i will be pointing out in a little bit coruscant and the Jedi Temple, because I have thoughts on that. Oh, boy. By the way, this robot tool thing that she's holding in her hand, which turns out to be everything that she could ever need everywhere. It must be male, because the first thing that she did was tell it to shut up. I'm probably going to say this 50 million times in the episode or throughout the series if I actually do more than this one episode. The ships look like toys, they look like shit, and they look animated for the animated series, not for a live-action show. But I digress. This is a Jedi fighter, or transport, or, you know, two-seater. I don't know. By the way, the Trade Federation seems to have already had problems with the Jedi, with the Republic, 100 years prior to... A Phantom Menace, which is crazy considering that it took them 100 years to try to do something about it. Now, I'm going to hesitantly exclaim that I do think the race of alien that this Padawan is is actually kind of cute looking. Now, I looked it up. I figured out that it was this cat race that we saw in the animated Clone Wars series. And I remember them kind of fondly, kind of, you know, for an animated show, kind of hot. But I digress. Oh, by the way, a Jedi doesn't pull their lightsaber until and, unless they intend to kill. But torturing with Jedi mind tricks, that's totally okay. That's fine. Like, nobody's going to stop you there. So I guess weird torturing Jedi boy is friends with the person who attacked the Jedi or supposedly maybe had attacked the Jedi. Oh, and cat girl here, she really gets into questioning. Uh, oh, and cat girl here, she really gets into questioning a uh, bland character. I can't even remember their names. Like this, this is how much I was invested in this. Um, now I will say the, the cat character, her name is Tassie Loa. I did remember that. Just saying, um, like, honestly, honest, honest to God, she was probably the best character in the show because she felt like something different about her. Oh, God. I just realized. I think I'm into cat girls. Brandon, got any cat girl animes? I mean, might as well check it out, right?
Another bland chip. Oh, looky, everyone, it's Coruscant! Except for that it looks horrendously. And honestly, the visuals of Coruscant in the prequels was better than this. They should have just taken shots from that. Removed the music, changed the music, whatever. Maybe changed some of the, the, the lighting just so that it looks just a little bit different, but at least it would have looked vibrant. It would have looked real. But this, this looked fake. It looked like clay, like a 3D artist didn't have enough time to actually make the visuals look good. Probably right on that one. So here, Asian Jedi guy asks his younglings, what comes to mind and me looking around the room was like, there's not one single white boy among the younglings. That's what came to my mind when I saw this. What comes to your mind? Oh, but that whole interaction is so weird. And then another Jedi, green Jedi comes walking in. And it's like, okay, is this the weird it thing? It kind of looks like it. It really does. Honestly, the interaction between... Asian Jedi guy and green it thing um, really just seems like the Jedi aren't allowed to have any feelings whatsoever. Like you can't worry about a comrade. You can't think about friends that you've made along the way. Like, no, you have to shut everything off. You have to be a total and complete psychopath. I think that's the right word, right? When you are able to just shut off any feelings whatsoever, like there's nothing, zero, zilch. That is what the Jedi in this show are acting like. We all know this is not the truth, or Ben Kenobi was wrong, Qui-Gon was wrong, Anakin was wrong, Luke was wrong, B. Yoda was wrong. Every single Jedi was wrong, always. And guess what? Even Mace Windu would have been wrong because he had feelings about Anakin. Oh, wait. I guess you can have animosity against other people. That's okay. I mean, I guess if rocks can be navigators in Star Wars now, I guess seats can be robots that pilot a ship. I, I guess. Makes total... Who am I kidding? This whole scene in the the prisoner transport ship makes absolutely no sense. There are no humans aboard. There are only these two robots flying and like one century robot walking around. Well, one of the guys apparently can turn off the cheat, uh, the, the, the cheat, yeah, the chair robots, but he couldn't turn off the century robot. It makes sense, whatever, like zero. Just, oh God. So they turn off those robots and the, sh the ship just smashes head on into an asteroid. Zero problems. Then it smashes into a second asteroid. No problems. Then it falls down to a planet without the correct trajectory that it would just burn up in the atmosphere, but it doesn't do that. No, 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 it doesn't do that. In fact, it smashes to the planet and you see it like, like, I don't know how it can just smash like that and just bounce off and be all right. What? First off, I don't know how this thing doesn't have any burn marks on it whatsoever, not even on fire from going through the atmosphere at that angle it's like oh well whatever like nothing bad happened and then smashes to the ground like that and it's still in one piece and didn't explode into a billion tiny pieces doesn't make sense does it oh but guess what she's alive she's alive makes full sense so right here is the point where i said oh my god 
This is the animated series. This is what it looks like. This is the visual. It doesn't look like live action. It does not look real. By the way, if you watch this scene, you will get the feeling that she has the biggest freaking balls anyone has ever seen on the entire planet. Not just this planet and the show, but on planet Earth in her pants, because that's the way she's walking. Jesus freaking Christ. Hypocritical feminist making this show. What a surprise. You get to see a guy topless. Do we get to see a girl topless? Probably not. Another ship that looks like crap. What a surprise. Surprise! Evil twin. Hmm. I, I called it. Jesus Christ. Did you kill Indara? Yes. I will kill them all. What? So I guess now using the dark side will lead to black eyes, you know, instead of the normal fire, red, yellow type of eye that you get from using the dark side of the force. Huh. By the way, on this mission that they're going on, I'm wondering where in the hell is uh, Anakin blew up the Death Star guy's uh, Padawan? Because, again, she's the only one that actually felt like a real character. And again, I might be into cat girls. I don't know. It's weird. Don't judge. Don't judge me. <laughs> Another shitty ship design. Try to say that three times fast. Lightsaber color? Do I even have to say it? Huh? Oh, for crying out loud. Wait, what? An acolyte doesn't use a weapon? Huh? I mean, isn't that supposed to be some sort of Sith or something? Sith use weapons. Oh, for... I have thoughts. Well, that was the first episode of The Acolyte. Um, I did say that I would try to review it. I know I haven't done a video in quite some time, and here it is, the first one, and it's such a shit show. Oh, boy, was that fun. Not... Um, definitely, like, this show is, it has so many problems, and I just pointed everything out. I made so many notes just on this first episode, and I could just take it apart scene by scene. I could do an EFAP about how bad this is, and just take every scene, every frame by frame, and say, look at this shit. Look at the shitty visuals that you got. You have, you don't have good visuals, which Star Wars normally has. You have shitty storytelling, which Star Wars hasn't had since the original trilogy. Um, and I, I'm saying that as a prequel fan, because I am a prequel fan. You know, I was a kid. I was nine years old when A Phantom Menace came out. Of course, that's my jam. But the original, just nothing is better than that. But it's just... Everything about this, it looks fake. Everything looks fake. Everything is just the choreography of the fight at the beginning of the episode. It was just nothing. I can't believe anyone can watch this and be like, oh my God, this is Star Wars. It's the furthest thing from Star Wars that I have ever seen from Disney Star Wars. Honestly, this just feels like some generic sci-fi where the creators were like, you know what, use AI to write it. And probably that's what it came down to. But even if it didn't, like, just, uh, come on, this was bad. And I honestly do not understand the people on Twitter going on about how much Star Wars this is, and they have never seen something this Star Warsy before. Like they were watching and were like, oh my God, this is Star Wars. Like I want the scene from Phantom Menace when Anakin sits in the cockpit and is like, now this is pod racing. I wanted that feeling so badly, but I didn't get it from this. I want to be like, now this is Star Wars, but it's not. It's definitely, definitely not Star Wars. Now, that being said, 
I mean, I do like a character here in the show. She looks sweet, you know, cute. Just, I think she's interesting. I wonder if she will show up again since she didn't seem to be on the mission where her master is going on. It just makes no sense to me whatsoever. All right, well, that being said, thank you for stopping by. If you want more reviews, and I will definitely try to do episode two tomorrow. This week, before the weekend, I will definitely get to episode two. And de so do please let me know in the comments what you thought of the show, what you think of the review. You know, I'm trying to do something a little bit different here. And, you know, just let me know. Thumbs up helps always, you know, thumbs down. That's fine with me. Whatever. Just do you. I'm enjoying it. Not. I mean, look, am I going to enjoy making videos about this? Kind of am. This is this was kind of fun doing it again. And I'm glad that I'm getting back into it. I did say I will. And here it is. Anyway, thank you again for stopping by. Until next time. Take care.